Hi, I'm Lydia Williams. I play for the women's national soccer team, which is the Matildas, and I'm a goalkeeper. Uh, when I have to compete, get ready for a competition, that's you know something that's representing Australia, I have to make sure that my training schedule changes as well. Uh, this could be, you know, I train more intensely or I focus on my weaknesses on the field and try to make them better so I don't have that many weaknesses. Obviously being a goalkeeper again, it's only one position so I've had to wait my turn and it's been seven years so I've been patient which I'm proud of myself and now it's finally here where I can start, you know, really making a name for myself and representing my country with pride. You know, my support network is pretty close. It's mostly my family and my close teammates uh, but also the people I respect like my coaches, um, my medical staff, it's a lot of people, but uh, you know, mostly the people that I'm close with and trust the most, I'll take the most of what they say out of it. Hi, I'm Christy Harrow and I play with the Australian Opals basketball team. Leaning into a major competition, my training and my life changes. My training becomes harder, it's training every day, it's weights every day, it's more intense. But even my lifestyle changes, I'm not at home as, as much. I travel a lot more, which is a lot harder. You leave your family and your friends, my two dogs, and uh, you know, it's something that you really miss. But by doing this, I know by the end, I'm doing what I love doing. There's times when things don't go to plan leading into a major competition. It can be travel. You know, you might be delayed. You might be delayed four hours in an airport, five hours. There can be sickness, especially when you travel to different countries. There can be different food that you have to eat in different countries, which makes it harder. So there's a lot of different things that you have to you know, look into when you're traveling and when you're about to play in a major competition and make sure you, you're really organized when you're leading into it. People that supported me along the way have been my parents, my husband, my teammates. The teammates are a big one because you've got to make sure that you're friendly with all your teammates and you get along really well together. But they've been very supportive through my career. Hello, my name is Raheem Williams. I live here at the Australian Institute of Sport and I'm a 400 metre hurdler. It gets closer to world champs or the really big international meets. I tend to keep it, my regime or routine the same. I've had a few barriers sort of this year and last year. Um, I had problems after nationals for the juniors where I was carrying a few injuries beforehand and then when I race at nationals, they all tend to go really bad. Mainly my mum, dad and my brother uh, were the really, really big ones. Um, my mum was a high jumper. Uh, my dad was a short hurdler, 110 hurdler I should say. And my brother, he was a sprinter, so as well as a hurdler. And they really kept me going as well as my coach. Hi, I'm Evan O'Hanlon and I'm a Paralympic sprinter. I run the 100 and 200 metres in the T38 class at the Paralympic Games. And at the last Paralympic Games in Beijing, I won the 100, 200 and the 4x1 relay, all in world record times. I have cerebral palsy. So cerebral palsy is basically brain damage uh, while you're still uh, inside your mum or just as you're coming out. And uh, that means that I can't move part of my body properly and I can't control it the way I want to. So for me, it's the whole left side of my body that I can't uh, coordinate the right way. And it means I'm less coordinated, not as strong. When I'm heading in towards a big competition like World Championships or the Paralympic Games, uh, I always, my training regime always changes because we're trying to peak exactly for that competition so that I'll be the fastest I can be on that particular day that I run the 100 metres. And that means that normally I won't train as hard, uh, so it's a bit relaxing actually. And uh, every training session is a lot faster. So I run a lot less, but running a lot faster. So I'll be running as fast as I can uh, in training sessions, which is, which is quite tiring, but not for as long. So it's, it's nice, it's the fun stuff. When we get towards competition, I'm always happy to go to training because I get to do what I, like, what I like, and that's running fast. When I was young, I always wanted to be an elite athlete, and one of the biggest barriers that was always in my way was uh, having a disability. Even though I have such a minimal disability, it was always gonna be a barrier uh, if I was going to try and compete with athletes on the highest level. And having the Paralympic Games and realising that I could go there really opened up a whole other world for me. It means that I still have to train really hard uh, to even up my body because my left side is smaller and weaker. So whenever I'm in the gym, I have to make sure that I'm doing a little bit extra on my left side. 
to even up my sides and make sure I'm strong and able to run in a straight line, I suppose, because I don't want to be too strong on one side. I'll be running around in circles. And uh, I suppose, yeah, just having a disability has, uh, it's been a barrier for me, but it's also been one of my big driving points because it's made me try so hard to get to where I am. Hi, I'm Katria Thomas, a former swimmer. Um, I was a triple Olympic gold medalist in 2004 at the Athens Olympic Games. When you get into that high level of competition, I suppose it really has to become the focus of your life. Um, and it can be quite hard to, um, I suppose, fit all the things that you need to do in. Um, one of the things I was always um, very conscious of is, is getting an education. Um, and that was one thing, whilst it probably wasn't the main focus in my life, it was a very important focus. And trying to balance it all out and get everything done that I needed to was really hard. Um, but I suppose as you get closer and closer to that real pinnacle of competition like an Olympics, the World Championships, the Commonwealth Games, um, your focus really has to narrow and, and really just look at getting the best out of yourself and preparing for that. Look, at the high level of competition, um, everyone has to overcome barriers and uh, obstacles in their way and uh, I certainly felt like I had my fair share of those in my career. Um, had a lot of injury problems to overcome. I had three shoulder reconstructions over my uh, over my career, and, and and they're really difficult. And um, you know, I I think the, I suppose what determines who you are as a person and, and as an athlete is how you overcome those challenges, and whether they let whether you let them beat you along the way. Um, and I suppose always sticking to your goals and. And uh, I suppose being willing to make the hard choices to help you get through those challenges is the key to success. Look, I think to be successful, um, you need a great support crew, uh, whether that be your family, your friends, your coaches, your teammates, um, the support staff around you. Um, it's really important, I think, that everyone has the same goal in mind as well. Because sometimes, you know, you get people with different agendas, People want to get different things out of uh, a certain situation, but I think to get that real high level of success, you need everyone on that same page and working together. And I was lucky enough during my time at the AIS that I had a, a wonderful bunch of people around me that believed in me, that worked hard for me. And, um, you know, I hope that when I was able to um, win that gold medal in Athens in the 100 Butterfly, I wasn't just standing on that um, medal dais for myself, it was for all those people who had helped me along the way. My name's Tanya Hebner, I'm a swimmer. When I compete internationally, um, things do tra change in my training routine and my lifestyle. And one big change that often can happen in training is that you might experience having a different coach because not your coach that you have at home doesn't always go away on a team. And, and it's important to um, build relationships with different people. Another barrier I probably had to face is uh, being of short stature and it's not something that I think has affected um, me in trying my best in everything I do. Um, I grew up in a country town and there was no other short statured people around and with my friends and with my family I still competed against them and I came last in pretty much everything but I think I was fairly accepting of it and um, it didn't really bother me and I think that's why I've become who I am is is that I didn't feel that I couldn't do it and probably having people beat me all the time has made me push myself even harder. I've always been supported by my family and friends. Um, my friends have definitely had a big influence on me in swimming especially since I have friends who I've trained with who complete triathlons and Ironman. I've always been really inspired by them. Um, from moving to the AIS, I have a huge support network and I'm hoping that I don't miss anyone, but I have a swimming coach, I have a gym coach, I have a nutritionist, I have a psychologist, I have a, oh, so many people, but um, we have doctors and nurses, we have massage therapists, we have physiotherapists, we can do Pilates, I do I have a yoga instructor and the list goes on and even the lifeguards at the pool and all those people who come together as a team and support me and my squad and all the other people that train here are so valuable to what we want to achieve.